Hi there, welcome to Virtual Machine Overview. In this lecture, I am going to introduce you to the most common Azure resource, the Virtual Machine. Azure Virtual Machines are on-demand, scalable computing resources that you typically deploy when you need more control over the environment for your application than what some of the other Azure services offer. Leveraging a virtual machine affords you the flexibility that virtualization offers without the need to purchase and maintain physical hardware. That said, you still need to maintain the VM by performing the same tasks that you'd need to perform for a physical machine. Things like configuration, patching, and even installing the software that's going to run on it. Because Azure VMs are quick and easy to deploy, they're often used to spin up development and test environments. VMs are also useful when you wish to port your applications to the cloud. By hosting your apps on VMs in Azure, you can pay for extra VMs or resources when the application load calls for them, and then shut them down when those resources are no longer needed. You only pay for the compute power you use. Organizations will often need or want to expand their physical data centers into the cloud. By leveraging a VPN connection between the on-prem environment and Azure, you can spin up VMs on an Azure virtual network and easily connect them to your organization's network. When you decide that it's time to deploy a virtual machine in Azure, there are some things you need to think about before doing so. For example, you need to think about where the VM is going to be deployed. Generally speaking, you want to deploy your VMs in the region closest to the users of that VM. You wouldn't want to deploy a VM in the West U.S. region if most of the users are physically located in New York. You also need to think about VM sizing. Consider the requirements of the application that will be installed on the VM. Is it a memory-intensive application, CPU-intensive, disk-intensive? All these considerations will drive what size VM you need to deploy. And don't forget about the OS. Do you need a Windows VM or a Linux VM? By sorting these things out before deploying, you make your life easier. Whenever you deploy a resource, be it a VM or a virtual network or whatever the resource may be, that resource can be deployed into any one of many geographical regions around the world. These regions are called locations when you create a VM and they specify where the virtual hard disks for the VM are stored. When you deploy a VM, you'll have the option to deploy the VM into an availability set. Although the Azure Service Level Agreement for a single VM is 99.9% .9 if you deploy the VM with premium storage, deploying two or more VMs in an availability set qualifies you for an improved 99.95 .95 VM SLA. What an availability set does is ensure that the VMs within it are distributed across multiple fault domains in the Azure data centers. It also ensures that they're deployed onto hosts within different maintenance windows. By deploying at least two VMs within an availability set, you can ensure that at least one VM is always running. Deploying your application across all VMs within the availability set ensures the app is always available. The size of the VM that you plan to deploy should be determined by the app you plan to host on it. The size you choose then determines the amount of processing power the VM will have, the amount of memory it will have, and the storage capacity. There are literally hundreds of different sizes to choose from. Keep in mind that Azure charges an hourly price for a VM based on the VM's size and operating system. For partial hours, Azure charges only for the minutes that are used. Storage for the disks is priced and charged separately. Keep that in mind. Now, when people are just starting out with Azure, they'll often run into quota issues and they'll become confused. This is because an Azure subscription enforces default quota limits that limit the number of VMs that can be deployed. The current limit on a subscription basis is 20 VMs per region. However, this is easily addressed by submitting a support ticket online with a request to raise that quota limit. This request is usually addressed within an hour. When a VM is deployed in Azure, it uses virtual hard disks, or VHDs. These are used to store the OS and the data. Browsing the Azure Marketplace reveals numerous images that you can choose from. These images include various versions and types of operating systems. These Marketplace images are identified by Image Publisher, 
offer SKU and version. I should point out, though, that only 64-bit operating systems are supported. In addition to Marketplace Images, you can also upload your own custom image that you can use later to deploy VMs from. VM extensions are used to configure additional capabilities for your VM via post-deployment configuration and automated tasks. You would typically use extensions to configure your VM by running a custom script when the VM is provisioned. You might also use extensions to set up DSC or desired state configuration on a VM so you can automate its configuration and its environment. VM extensions are also often used to collect diagnostics data from a VM that can be used to monitor the health of the applications running on it. A VM in Azure requires several other resources to be deployed in order to run. When you deploy a VM, if these resources don't already exist, they'll be created for you when the VM is created. The necessary resources include a resource group, a virtual network, and a network interface. If you configure VM diagnostics, you'll also need a storage account to house them. If you plan to make your VM remotely accessible outside the internal network, you'll also need a public IP address as well. While not actually necessary, if you plan to store data or applications on your VM, you'll also need to deploy and attach at least one data disk as well. So as you can see, there are quite a bit of things to consider when deploying a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure. Hi there, welcome to Availability Sets and Availability Zones. In this lecture, we're going to look at what they are, what they offer, and how they differ. Availability sets provide redundancy and availability for virtual machines. When you deploy at least two virtual machines into an availability set, Microsoft ensures that at least one of them will remain available during planned or unplanned maintenance events. Deploying your VMs into an availability set entitles you to an improved VM SLA of 99.95% uptime. It's important to note that if you deploy a single VM into an availability set by itself, you'll need to use premium SSD or ultra disk for all OS disks and data disks in order to qualify for the SLA for virtual machine connectivity of at least 99.9% .9 uptime. When you deploy VMs into an availability set, each VM is assigned an update domain and a fault domain by the underlying Azure platform. In any given availability set, there are five non-user configurable update domains assigned by default. Resource Manager deployments can be increased to provide up to 20 update domains. These update domains are groups of virtual machines and underlying physical hardware that can be rebooted at the same time. If you place more than five VMs into an availability set, the sixth VM is placed into the same update domain as the first VM. The seventh VM is placed into the same update domain as the second VM, and so on and so forth. During planned maintenance, one update domain is rebooted at a time. And when an update domain is rebooted, it's given 30 minutes to recover before maintenance is initiated on the next update domain. A fault domain is a group of VMs that share a common power source and network switch. By default, VMs that are added to an availability set are split out across as many as three fault domains in resource manager deployments or two fault domains in classic deployments. Although placing VMs into an availability set won't protect an application from OS-specific issues or application-specific failures, it does limit the impact of physical hardware failures, network outages, or power interruptions within an Azure data center. Availability zones are a bit different from availability sets because while availability sets protect your applications and data from hardware failures within a single Azure data center, availability zones protect your apps and data from entire Azure data center failures. This is because availability zones are unique physical locations within an Azure region. Each availability zone consists of one or more data centers within that region. Each data center is equipped with independent power, cooling, and networking. There are at least three separate zones in all enabled regions to ensure resiliency. This physical separation within a region protects applications and data from data center failures. 
virtual machines deployed in availability zones enjoy a four nines or 99.99% VM uptime SLA. The key takeaway here is that availability sets protect VMs from hardware failures within a single Azure data center, while availability zones protect them from entire data center failures. Hi there, welcome to service level agreements for virtual machine. What we're going to do here is review the three different SLAs that are available for Azure VMs. VM deployments that include at least two instances deployed across two or more availability zones in the same region come with a guarantee that virtual machine connectivity to at least one instance will be available at at least 99.99% of the time, or four nines. For virtual machine deployments that consist of two or more instances deployed in the same availability set or in the same dedicated host group, Microsoft guarantees that virtual machine connectivity to at least one instance will be available at least 99.95% of the time. Single instance virtual machine deployments that use premium SSD or ultra disk for all operating system disks and data disks are guaranteed to have virtual machine connectivity of at least three nines or 99.9%. So as you can see, there are several ways to qualify for high VM availability SLAs.